Did you hear about the condos that collapsed in Florida? There are many potential causes that could have initiated the collapse of the Champlain Tower South condominium building. But many experts believe it was the result of outdated structural foundations and delayed foundation maintenance. Looking at it from a legal standpoint, is it the engineers or the condo association's fault for this tragic event? On Thursday, June 24th, when the building initially collapsed, first responders had arrived 30 minutes after and used ladders and lifts to recover survivors trapped in elevated portions of the remaining building. Search and rescue crews have since been working for over hundreds of hours trying to locate potential survivors. These crews have been rotating 12-hour shifts to maximize efficiency. According to Florida State Fire Marshal Jimmy Petronas, they come from Tallahassee, they come from Orlando, they come from Tampa, they come from Israel, they come from Mexico, they come from Jacksonville, they come from Fort Myers, they come and they leave their families to come and work around the clock, he said, and the reward is the life they save. As of today, July 9th, more than two weeks after the building collapsed, search and rescue crews have continued to search for those missing. There are now 36 confirmed deaths, 29 of whom have been identified. There are also 109 people who are reported unaccounted for. Rosa Flores reported from Surfside, Florida. They are very careful sifting through the rubble. They only bring and use the heavy machinery when they feel safe. They methodically analyze their movements because any movement could be catastrophic. It is very uncommon for a building, bridge, or any other structure to fail in the United States. At any time a structure fails, it's usually due to some outside cause such as an earthquake. With innovations in technology and building codes over time, the collapse of a structure such as this is very rare. This is why many engineers and construction experts are left confused and still in search of the root cause of this terrible tragedy. There are many hypotheses that could be the initial cause of the building's failure, but no one will know for sure until the site is fully examined piece by piece. When looking at the possible cause of collapse, the majority of experts' analysis has been gathered through video caught by nearby neighboring buildings. There is very little video footage of the collapse itself, and the footage that was recorded appears very grainy. This makes it very hard to get a good outlook at specific details of the collapse itself. According to Donald O. Dozenberry, a consulting engineer who has investigated many structural collapses, it does appear to start at or very near the bottom of the structure. It is not like there is a failure high and it pancaked down. A video captured from the south of the building appears to show its collapse in stages. The center of the building appears to collapse first. Then a section behind the center collapsed next. Lastly, the building's eastern end falls about six seconds later. Mr. Dusenberry, whose impressions match those of several other structural engineers who examined the video, said such failure would suggest a foundational related matter potentially corrosion or other damage at a lower level. But he said it was not certain that corrosion was the culprit and added that you certainly can't rule out a design or construction error that has survived for 40 years. One other clue that a problem started at the bottom of the building was that immediately before the collapse, one of the residents saw a hole of sorts open near the pool. Michael Stratton and his wife, Cassie Stratton, who is missing, was on the phone with him and was looking out the window of her fourth floor unit when she told him the hole appeared. After that, the call was cut off. Rick De La Guardia, an engineer based in Miami with experience in forensic investigation of building component failures, said that the collapse could have also started higher than the foundation, possibly on the second floor. Explanations for an initial failure at the bottom of the building could include a problem with the deep reinforced concrete pilings on which the building sits, perhaps set off by an unknown void or a sinkhole below which then compromised the lower columns. Or the steel reinforcing the columns in the parking garage on the first few floors could have been so corroded that they somehow gave way on their own. Or the building itself could have been poorly designed, built with substandard concrete or steel, or simply with insufficient steel at critical points. Evan Bentz, a professor of structural engineering at the University of Toronto said, the primary purpose of all the columns in the basement is to hold the structure up in the air. Because the structure stopped being held up in the air, the simplest explanation is that the columns in the basement ceased to function. The 2018 report from the consultant, an engineer hired by the Condo Owners Association to examine the building, helped set in motion plans for a $12 million repair project 
that had been set to start soon, more than two and a half years after the building managers were warned about the severe structure damage. The corrosion of the reinforcing steel identified in that report could have been a critical issue if it occurred on or near the supporting columns and was pronounced enough. If I was an investigator, I would check this as an issue, Mr. Dunsbury said. Looking at the makeup and history of the condo association itself, they have a rough past. There were originally seven members, but back in 2019, five resigned due to underlying repairs on the building. One of these resignations included the president, Annette Goldstein. Goldstein's letter appears to indicate growing frustration in trying to resolve the issue and pay for the repairs, which are estimated to be about $9 million in 2018. The new condo association president, Jean Wadnicki, warned residents in an April 2020 letter that the situation had gotten significantly worse since major structure damage was identified in the 2018 inspection. She urged them to support a $15 million assessment for repairs while acknowledging the work could have been done or planned in years gone by. Authorities have opened criminal and civil investigations into the collapse of the oceanfront Champaign Tower South. At least six lawsuits have been filed by Champaign Tower families. When looking at whose fault it is between the architects, the engineers, and the condo association, a real estate lawyer, Daniel Wagner, states, It is my professional opinion that everyone is going to blame everyone else. The role of the building owners and the architects and the engineers and the inspectors and safety professionals is to make sure that buildings are safe for their occupants to be in. The lawsuits filed to date accuse the Champaign Tower South Condominium Association and in some cases local architects and engineers of negligence for failing to address serious structural problems noted back as far as 2018. At a hearing Friday, roughly a week after the accident, a judge appointed a receiver to represent the condominium association's interests given the traumas experienced by board members, one of whom remains missing. The board has about $48 million in insurance coverage, while the oceanfront land is valued at $30 million to $50 million, the judge was told. The judge said he hoped the litigation could be resolved quickly, perhaps within a year. Until then, he authorized the receiver, attorney Michael Goldberg, to provide $10,000 each to residents for temporary housing and $2,000 to cover funeral expenses. Robert Mongaluzzi, who also represents the Rosenberg family and is seeking access to the site, said cases such as these are not about the money. As days pass, we continue to search for those who are missing and have hope that they are still alive. As the site continues to be examined piece by piece, we continue to learn more about this terrible tragedy in search of an answer. We want to find out why it happened so in turn we can prevent it from happening again in the future. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.